Hey YouTube, welcome to part 4 of the Blanket Box build and in this episode I'm going to finish it. It will be complete, it will be a silk purse and not a sow's ear. Here we go. Well, according to the vagrancies of life, this has had a couple of days to dry instead of just the one I planned. So we'll take the clamps off him now and just see how he turned out. Well, nothing sprung apart, so that's always a good start. Alright, nice and level. So, next job to do is to get this floor in here. Okay, all looks good, all around. Got a bit of sandpaper over this top edge here, just needs a little bit of touch up, and we're all good. Next job's the floor. And to do that I need a tape measure which I put down somewhere not quite in sight but also not far away. Now check this box too, we have 403mm, 402.5mm, so half millimetre out that way, live with that, 762, 763, 1mm out that way. If we're reasonably square, I can still live with it. That is 852. And that is 853. One millimetre out of square, which is just a shade over 30 seconds of an inch, I can live with that, it'll work. Now, next thing to do is to glue up the floor. Given the way it sits in, it's hard to know which is the best way to get it glued up. I think it might be better to put the runners on the sides and then just sit the floor down on them and glue it in that way. Yeah, yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just get that prepped up and then I'll get the camera on to show exactly what's happening. Well, these are the original blocks that were in holding the bottom in and they look pretty rubbish. They need a good clean up to be able to use them again. So I had some wood that was do the trick. All I need to do is to glue that and put a few tacks in it just to hold it in along there. Then I'll flip the box over and do the other end. Let that dry for a bit and I should be able to just put the floor in on them. That's the plan. I'll see how it goes. Well, it's got that one on. Got just a nice little bit of glue squeezing out. Just again visible on the other side, so that should stick down really well. I'll flip him over and do this other end next. Putting this other end on. Well, back where he's getting a bit empty. Nice speed of that all the way along. We put this in, we give him a bit of a wriggle just to spread that out. Got good contact, it sort of holds it there with a suction once you get it nicely spread out. Normally I don't start in the middle, but in this particular case it's hard to hold. Being with a layer of glue there, it sort of tends to slip and slide on it. Starting in the middle is a sin that I don't normally do, as I say. In this case, there's extenuating circumstances. All right, a tiny bit more glue than I needed at the ends. It'll all be invisible anyway, because once the floorboards go in there, you won't see that corner. Again, underneath won't see it, so it won't matter that much. Right, that's done. I'll let that dry for a little bit before I put the floorboards in. It's time to put the floor in this blanket box now. I'm just going to glue the floor in. I'm not going to put any nails in because I don't think it needs any nails in to hold it there. I'll put a little bit of weight down on top of it just to hold it in place. I've got plenty of scrap iron that I can use for that. So, without further ado, We'll get some glue on these support pieces and then just sit the boards in on them. That's the support pieces in down here. I've put them in, uh, I don't know, a good while ago now because it's been a while since I've been out in the shed to work. Life and work gets in the way of my hobbies continually. I don't matter if we have too much here because it'll just dribble down. It's not going to do any damage to anything that we're going to see. It's not going to be visible at all. Now, 
I have test fitted these boards before I did this and picked a reasonably pleasing pattern for the grain. Not that I have a lot of choices because these are the leftover boards after I picked the best patterns out for the outside. Well, actually after my wife picked the pattern she liked for the outside. I think that'll just sit down there fine without any weight on it. Put a bit of scrap iron on it just in case it needs something. There we go. That'll hold it down just fine. Had a look underneath, it all looks good. Let it dry till tomorrow. Then I can probably think about preparing it for painting. Because I will paint it before I put the hinges and everything on it. This is the lid of the box ready for painting, or varnishing at least. And I'm going to try something I've never tried before. I've got some spray tin of Estopol, which is clear varnish, gloss varnish, polyurethane. And I'm going to give that a go. I've never been one to believe that varnish can be successfully sprayed, but we shall give it a go and see what happens. If it's no good, I'll have to sand it back and go with a brush. I always thought varnish would bubble too much. Hmm. Well, in its semi-dry state, it looks kind of impressive. Or in its wet state, I should say. In its wet state, it looks very impressive, so see how she dries, I guess. Going to need a few coats. Gone on nicely. I'm just going to do the lid first. I'll do it one side at a time. And if I'm happy with that, I'll spray the box as well. Just leave that sit there to dry. I'm just going to give it a second coat now. Interesting, I'm a little sad coming down probably because I tried to put a bit extra in that corner. A little wipe of the finger, and because it's such a thin layer, I think it's going to work. Okay. Well, so far I'm impressed, but I think it still needs another three coats over it. Be a good gloss. We'll see how it goes. Now I need some hinges for the box, and I ended up with these ones. I actually wanted to get some brass hinges like this, perhaps a little bit shorter, and put them on, but they were incredibly hard to find. I couldn't find any hardware shop around that stocked anything like it. On eBay, the only ones I could find were too small, sort of like that big. So I ended up getting these, they're shiny silver, and of course I didn't want that, so I put them down on the sheets of paper and I painted them a matte black, it's a zinc based paint. They should look okay on the job that they're doing. They certainly look better than silver anyway. So I'll get them on and the blanket box, my wife's blanket box is then finished. And this is the plan for the hinges. Center them up on that upright, putting the hinge part on the outside so that when they lift, the lid will just lift straight up and if necessary, it'll come all the way back. I don't think we'll need to go that high, but it just makes more sense to do it that way. Doing it that way keeps that inside, but you're limited to going only halfway back, and I think that'll be too much strain on the hinge if it ever goes back that way. Whereas putting them on this way, no extra strain on the hinge. So that's what I've chosen to do. There's some screws that came with it, and I've got some brassy looking ones. It might be just a bit too brassy for this. I think I might be better off using these and putting some paint over them just to blacken the top of them. If I do it carefully, it should not be a problem. And yeah, that'll be a better fit there, that's for sure. Quite ready to pull the trigger then. No, oh, not working straight, that's part of my trouble. I'll do some power to probably make it easier anyway. Okay, it's got a 1 16th in this bill here. Yeah, it's going to penetrate in enough so I can just start the thread of the screw. It's getting a bit tight as it gets in there. I should get some soap perhaps and put that on the threads. That will help it go in. I 
And just in case you don't know, I'm pack drilling this so they can clean the uh, bleeds of the drill out. Otherwise, if they get too clogged up, they can break the drill. And that's particularly important with a smaller drill bit. Yeah, I'm just got to put a lot of paint on it to uh, hide that silver. Now, in order to put this on without getting paint where I don't want it, I got this scrap of plastic that had the hinges in it. And I just cut a little hole in there. I can just go like that, and once that's dry, it'll match in with the paint that's already there. Yeah, you can probably see the hole better now. Just a little bit bigger than the head of the screw. Oh, nearly missed one. There we go, got them all. And that is one finished blanket box. Sit back like that. Over like that. Piece of cake. Well, that's it. The build's complete. My wife's very happy with the final result. It's turned into a nice piece of furniture put at the bottom of the bed in the spare room. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.